in this video, I'm going to recreate your homepage using Elementor. So this existing homepage for the old site was created actually using a bunch of widgets. That's just how the old theme used to do things. So we're going to recreate it with uh, the Elementor page builder. So you've got an image slider up here at the top, and then you've got this text here underneath. Then we've got three columns. Each one has a headline, an image, uh, some text, excuse me, and then a button at the bottom. And then underneath that, we've got a divider. And then here we've got an image with a testimonial and a button. And then here we've got a listing of all of our meetings and events. So I'm going to recreate this using Elementor and show you how to do it. The first thing I want to point out is here on the edit page for the home page. In the Astra settings, I have uh, disabled the title, disabled the featured image, and I've set the content layout to full width stretched. So this will give us the ability to add some full screen uh, background colors and things like that. Um, so I'll show you what this looks like here um, using Elementor. So let's go ahead and edit it now. All right, so here we've got a blank canvas. And the first thing that we need to add is that image gallery. So we're going to use this uh, widget called the image carousel. So I'm going to drag that over here. And I've got uh, the options over here to add some images uh, and then choose the image size. I'm going to go with um, a full image size. Uh, let's go ahead and just select a couple images so that we can see the changes as we're making them. And I'm going to speed this up and choose some images. All right, so I have added in the uh, image carousel here at the top. So this is what it looks like. There's a little fade between each of the images. And there's these arrows for navigation on the left and the right, as well as the dots that you can use to navigate. So let me show you how I did that in Elementor. All right, so here I've added that image carousel, as you've seen. And I have selected uh, the five images that I wanted to use. You can add more. There is no limit to the amount that you add. Uh, so feel free to edit these as you like. Then the image size. I chose to keep everything to um, a large image size, not to exceed this uh, 1024 pixels. That should be fine for um, how we're displaying it here on the website. And then slides to show. This just means how many at a time. So we want one slide at a time so that each time we click the navigation, it'll go through just one individual image each time. We don't want to stretch the image at all. And then navigation, you can choose to do the arrows on the left and the right, the dots below the image. Uh, you can have no navigation and just have it automatically scroll through and not give the user any options. Um, I chose to do arrows and dots, which has both uh, these arrows here on the left and right, as well as the dots below the image. And then we don't want the link. Uh, the image to link anywhere, so we set that to none, and then caption to none as well. And then if we look at some additional options, we can have it pause when the mouse hovers over it. We can also choose to autoplay it, uh, yes or no, and then the autoplay speed, this is in milliseconds, so 5,000 is equal to 5 seconds. And then infinite loop just means it'll start over at the beginning once it hits the end. You can choose to turn that on or off. The effect, you can have it fade or slide. Feel free to update that as you like. I've got it to fade right now. The animation speed is the speed between each individual image and each time it slides. So uh, this is also milliseconds. So this is 3 tenths of a second is that, that time. If we were to change this to, let's say, like 2,000, that's 2 seconds, you'll notice um, as we transition here, it takes a lot longer for that next image to appear. Um, so we can go maybe 500 for a nice, uh, a nice transition there. So that's half a second. And then uh, direction, this is only going to kick in if you're doing the slide, but since we're doing fade, this doesn't matter. And then there's some options on the style tab. We can um, change the size, position, and color of these arrows here. So I've set them to the same red as your logo, and it's used throughout the rest of the site and uh, the dots as well, position, size, and color. And so I've changed these also to be red. And then you can add some border options to the image, but we're just gonna stay with the standard uh, squared edges on the, the image. Now there are a few additional things we can do here. One thing um, that we have the ability to do since we chose that uh, full width stretch option is we can click here and edit the actual section that contains this image slider. And we can uh, come over here to style. 
we can go background type, we can add, uh, let's just add like a very subtle gray background to this section. You can also play around with um, different gradients or background image if you want behind it. And then the other thing I think that might look good is if we add a little bit of padding to this section as well. So right now we are um, linked together, but we don't want to do the same padding for everything. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll leave it on pixels and um, we'll do a top padding of 40 and a bottom padding of, uh, yeah, we'll do a bottom padding of 40, top padding of 40, 40 and then um, left and right, maybe just eight uh, pixels on each. That'll carry over all the way through on mobile devices as well. Um, that just gives us a little bit more space here above and below um, our, uh, our slider. So I think that looks pretty good, so we'll click update. And that part is now done, so we'll move on to the next section. And so for this next section here, uh, we just have this text that is below the slider. So what we did for that is we actually used uh, this heading widget here. So we inserted this heading widget and you'll see that it's really just for the, the content, there's mainly just this title. So I just inserted all of the text into this title area. And then there's a couple of options I did here. You can adjust the size. And so instead of the exact pixel value of the font size, they make it a little bit easier to just sort of choose small, medium, large, extra large, double XL. Um, so I chose large and I think that that looks pretty good. And that should also scale very well as device size changes. So mobile phone, tablet, desktop, uh, this should adjust relatively to the device that's being looked at. So that should work well there. And then HTML tag, um, this is where we're using a P tag or a paragraph tag because we don't really want to use um, one of the heading tags because it's more of sort of paragraph content. It's multiple sentences. It's not really um, just a headline that has a couple of words that is sort of outlining a page. So that's why we're using the, the P HTML tag for that. And then I've clicked this uh, alignment to make sure everything is uh, center aligned there. Then uh, over here on the style tab, I did make a couple of uh, more adjustments. Under typography, what I did was I changed the style to, excuse me, to italic, and that matches up the italics that was on the original site. And then um, I did adjust the line height a little bit by just sliding this over. Um, initially, without this 1.3, um, everything was a little bit cramped and kind of hard to read. So um, adding a 1.3 uh, line height here just kind of spaced things out nicely. So that takes care of that section. So I decided to make a few updates to the homepage here, and I wanted to show you what I did um, in Elementor just so you get a good idea of, of uh, how I made these changes. So you notice this blue background color here. Uh, the arrows are now white. These are still red underneath. And then I've got this um, this cool little shape divider, which is uh, like a curve shape here that runs um, in the upwards direction and goes behind this uh, the main image. And then another one that comes down here in the opposite direction. And then we've got uh, a light gray background color here. And then we've got this box. Um, we're going to copy this, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And we're going to put two more boxes next to it for a total of uh, three columns. Uh, and then in each box, we've got a header, we've got some basic text, and then we've got a Learn More button that'll link over to the About page here, and then it'll link to different places in the other boxes as well. So let me show you what I did. So uh, in this main section, which spans the whole screen, I updated the background color to blue. And then what I did was I came down here for the shape divider and I went to bottom and um, I chose the curve type. And um, by default, the color is going to be white, so we don't need to set that. And I just adjusted the height so that, um, uh, so let's see, so by default, it's very similar to where it is there. And I just adjusted the height and bumped it up um, a little bit. So you can play with, with these things here and you'll see how it adjusts there in the background. So I'll put that back to that. Um, and then what I did here, this um, just continues to have a white background color like it always did. So I didn't make any changes to this, um, this header here. And then this section down here, what I did was I gave it a background color of this light gray. So that is there. And then the shape divider, this one I put on the top of it. So this one's up here. And um, I did a curve and then did the height, and when you put a curve on the top, it automatically does it in the, the downward direction. So that then sinks kind of behind what we've got these three columns set up. And in this first column, 
Um, you click on this little square here and this gives you your column settings. You'll notice that because it says edit column up here. And what I did here was for a background, I made sure to set that to white. Um, and then border, you'll notice I gave it a one pixel border. Um, and then I made the border this uh, also this gray color. Then a border radius of five pixels, that gives it the rounded edges. And then I gave it a box shadow. So I did a very, very light, like a transparent black, so almost like a super, super light gray. And then uh, vertical offset, that's going to bump it downward. And then blur just kind of um, does exactly what it says. It blurs it um, and spreads it out a little bit. So I set that to 20, and that's what adds that, that nice shadow there. So now in order to um, – actually, oh, the other thing I'll mention is what uh, is contained within this column. So we've got three different widgets. We've got a heading widget here. Then we've got a text editor where we put this uh, text in the middle. And then down here we've got a button. So I did make a few adjustments to each of these areas. Um, the heading, uh, the only thing I changed here was I made it a medium size. That just made it a little bit smaller uh, than it was by default. And then I set the text color to blue. And then here for this text editor, I just uh, added the content into that box. And then for the style, I made it a little bit lighter gray, not quite as dark as the rest of the site. And then under typography, um, I believe I just did the line height just a little bit. Um, it was even more spaced out than this, so this kind of shrinks it down a little bit, which is good for short copy that's not really long. You can actually um, shrink your line height a little bit because uh, it's, it's easier to read. And then with the button here, what I did was um, I changed the text to learn more. I uh, put in a link here, and what's uh, cool about this is you can actually type in the name of a page, and it'll pull up a drop-down of all of the pages and testimonials. It'll tell you what kind of content it is. So I wanted the About page, so I just clicked on that and automatically inserts the link there for you. So that's pretty cool. Um, size, uh, I think small is the default size, and so I left that the way it was. Now this is um, pretty cool here. You can add an icon and you can choose to display it before or after the text on the button. So I put a nice rounded um, arrow icon there, which I think looks good, after the icon. And then this right here adjusts the how much spacing is between the text and the icon. So I um, increase that a little bit to 12 to give it a little more breathing room. Um, the other thing here is with style. So with buttons, the hover effect does come into play and you will want to um, give that some attention. So in this case, you'll see normal is selected. I've got a text color of white, background color of the lighter red, and then a border radius of five pixels gives it the nice rounded corners. Then when you click on hover, uh, the only thing that's changed here is the background color. This red is a little bit darker. So that just gives it the appearance there when you hover over it that it gets that darker red color. Um, and that's all I did there. So now what I want to show you is with um, this example, we've got three columns, and they're all going to be very similar. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to hover over the column, and I can right-click and then say Duplicate. So that um, actually adds another column right here next to it. So what I can do now is actually right-click on one of these and Delete. And then I'll do the same thing one more time, Duplicate, and um, I'm going to go ahead and delete uh, this column. So now I've got those three columns, and each and every column is duplicated, so it's all exactly the same. Now what I can do is just come into here and update the header, update the text real quick, and um, update the where the button links to and the language on the button, if need be. But all the other settings are already set for us, so we don't have to go through and set them every time. So um, any anything can be duplicated. You just right-click on um, whether it's a, an entire section that you want to duplicate, whether it's... Um, a column like here we just duplicated. You can also uh, look at this button and um, duplicate the button itself and then drag it somewhere else um, on the page wherever you wanted to put it and drop it in there somewhere. So use the duplication uh, to your advantage. It's, uh, it'll save you a lot of time. All right, and so the final thing I want to show you guys is the bottom section, the last piece here on the homepage. Uh, we've got the what people are saying and the meetings and events. So this I designed uh, quite differently than the current layout that you have on your site. 
So I kept all the same information, I just moved things around and designed it differently. So we're gonna have this image, we're gonna have a header, we're gonna have this testimonial, a button to go to all the testimonials, as well as then uh, the meetings and events listing with another way to get to all of them. So I just decided to lay it out a little bit differently. So let's take a look at how we did that in Elementor. So the first thing to note is that this section right here, the content width, instead of boxed, I did full width. So that means that um, all the columns inside of this section are gonna stretch to um, the complete width here all the way over to the left and all the way over to the right of the, the browser of the screen. So that is setting the content width to full width. Then we have two columns in here and um, on each of these columns, by default, they usually have a little bit of um, a little bit of padding and a, a margin in between them. So what I did was I zeroed out the margin and then gave them uh, some different paddings. And you'll notice here that if I click on this desktop icon and I go to tablet, I shrink the amount of padding that's being applied here. And then if I go to the mobile, you'll see I shrink the amount of padding even more, just so that we don't have a giant amount of padding here on a small screen. But it looks really nice when we go back to the desktop view to have a lot of padding here. Um, and so on this, on this column, uh, I've set a background to blue and then this I've set to white. Um, this, there's a little bit of a weird trick, but I've set this to be white as well, this text, uh, with just some custom CSS that I had to write. Um, I updated uh, this button. I kept most of the same styles, but you'll notice here I had to change the background color and the text color. Um, doing a, a red button like this, this button here wouldn't really look good on the blue background, so I updated that, and then I make the text change to red when you hover over it. Um, and so let's take a look at how I built this. So this is just a, a heading. Um, we've used those before. And then this one here, we're actually using the WooThemes testimonials. So this is a plugin that we're using that um, you can add all your testimonials to. And there's just a few parameters here that I've added, but I just used the text, uh, text editor widget and threw that short code in there. So it displays there. Um, this is just a button like we've used before. And then here is just a single image um, I've aligned it to the left so that it'll always stay flush to this text and to this button. And then uh, style-wise, I gave it a solid border of six pixels um, with a color of white. So that adds a nice little contrast there. So it pops off the page a little bit. The final thing I did to this image here is under advanced. I gave it a top margin of 50, which actually, once we go all the way down to mobile, then I just want to do a top margin of probably 20. Um, that should be good down on the mobile device. All right. And then over here in this column, um, we zeroed everything out just like before so that the, the padding and the margins and everything matches this left column, uh, the blue column. We just uh, went ahead and changed the background color here to white and then the header text to blue. And then here, this is again another short code that we're using a plugin for called display posts. Um, we've got a post type called events and then we're gonna say we want three of them, include the content, yes, uh, and then this just orders them a certain way there. So you really shouldn't need to mess with that. Um, it'll automatically add your new events. Um, there is a little trick here with the ordering stuff that I won't go into right now, but if, um, if you guys have questions about how to order these, um, I will show you some tricks on how to do that. Uh, and then at the bottom, we just have a view all button and this button goes to all of your meetings and events, your main page. So that's how that we went ahead and did that. I'm actually just noticing now, it looks like I still have the shadow on this column because I copied it from a previous one. So we actually want to get rid of the border uh, we don't need a border radius anymore, and then we can get rid of that box shadow. Cool, so that shadow is gone now. And that's how I did the homepage.